You know something unique about tabletop gaming as a whole, and especially Warhammer? A storyline can be almost entirely optional. Think about it. 40k has the Tyranids, the Orcs, all a variety of Eldar, and of course the Imperium, just to name a few. And that's just 40k, not even touching AOS. If they wanted to, they theoretically can never update anything resembling a storyline ever again. If people want a new faction, just throw in a codex's worth of lore explaining who they are and toss them into the setting. New units only need maybe a few paragraphs of explanation. But storyline really isn't necessary for it all. With all the background events such as the War in Heaven, or the Horus Heresy, and the 10,000 years between then and the now quote-unquote of the setting, there's more than enough context for people to go wild with and have fun with their armies in. And yet the storyline of the setting undoubtedly is something almost everyone in the hobby is interested in. As much as we all love the existing setting of the universes Warhammer has to offer, we want to see what it's all building up to. Of course we can always make up our own stories and campaigns of our own, that's a whole lot of fun on its own, but we also want to know where it's going officially. Where is Gilliman taking the Imperium? How is the galaxy going to respond to the Tyranids coming in force? Just who are the Dark Eldar sexually assaulting next? And without an advancing story line, none of these questions would have any solid answers. Alright, maybe we know the answer to the Dark Elder one, it's everyone, but you get my point. Advancing the storyline is how we get new characters, flesh out existing ones, and generally keep expanding the universe. But that being said, is it inherently good to keep things going forward? Do we always want the storyline to advance, or is it best we keep it where it is? And for clarity's sake, when I say storyline, I don't mean any kind of story whatsoever like individual space marine chapters or work clan, I mean an overall story that runs throughout the whole setting. Let's go from bad to good. Why don't we want to advance the storyline? I mean there's more lore and characters minis to buy, what's not to like besides the crippling debt? Well, ignoring the fact that sometimes new minis look like this, there are several problems that come up. For starters, let's take the Tau. They're a perfect example of issue number one. I like them as a faction, I'm not just gonna shit on them here for funsies, I have coordinate space marines for that little nugget of hatred. But let's look at them as a faction in the universe as a whole. Compared to even the dying race that is the Eldar, they are a tiny, tiny faction. If the Imperium ever truly mobilized against them, they're screwed. They can't webway their way away, what a mess of a sentence, like the Eldar, and they aren't a group of impossible to kill mushroom men like the orcs. If the storyline advances in a way that brings the Tyranids truly in force from the eastern side of the galaxy, or the Imperium tries to focus on one threat at a time, and chooses Xenos first, the tower are probably gonna get wiped out. And if Warhammer was just an overly huge bunch of novels, games, and whatnot, that'd be fine. But it isn't. It's a war game where people have major attachments to the groups and people within it. Let's not even begin to get into the monetary costs people have sunk into their favorite race. The narrative advancing in ways that make sense may very well have the Tau be destroyed, or any other number of factions, really. And that would be a major middle finger to anyone who plays them. Hey, hey man, thanks for spending all that money on that faction you like, but we decided to burn it to the ground and won't be releasing anything for it ever again because they're all dead now. Thanks for understanding though, Chief. Yeah, that'd go over well. Another issue is that advancing the store online can kind of take away from the homebrew all about your guys appeal that Warhammer has. I'll make him an example to explain what I mean. Let's say you play the Imperial Guard. Your army is based entirely out of the planet Cadia in your own little lore you've made up for it. They live, fight, and die there, never to be sent away. They're one of the planet's permanent defenses and always will be. Well, with the fall of Cadia, you can go fuck a blender right along with the army, my friend, because now it's gone. That's a very specific example, but I hope it highlights what I mean. Moving the storyline can ruin immersion because if it's all just setting, you can make up whatever you want for it. But with a narrative, it's harder to do that because there's objective right and wrong answers for what's occurring inside the setting. If you play BL on Eldar, you can have your own personal narrative of what the faction is doing even though they're not a homebrew creation. You know they're xenophobic even for Eldar and are the most militarized. Fantastic, you've got a baseline, do whatever you want with it. Or should I say you could have done that, because the storyline has now locked you into being a shadow of your former self since half the craft world is either dead or joining with Yvrain. If you played BL Tan and didn't like that change, well I'm sorry but that's what happens when the storyline goes forward. If you don't advance it, well, none of that can happen. You still have a whole universe to play in, and given that 40k is literally galactic in scale, you have plenty of room to make up your own stories in. Same goes for Age of Sigmar and its semi-infinite realms. The narrative can't screw over your faction, and it can't ruin your own version of 40k because there is no narrative. There is no narrative to drive us to the brink. Only sweet, beautiful setting. You know what happened to Warhammer Fantasy when the narrative finally advanced? It got obliterated. Thanks for playing for 30 years, so we didn't collect any of the several armies we're now getting rid of. Go fuck yourself. I mean, fuck, I wasn't even a Warhammer when that happened and I'm bitter about it. The storyline had been stagnating for a while, and when it finally moved forward like people wanted, it moved right off a cliff in a ravine full of heroin needles. If things move forward, even if they move forward in all the right ways, things can still go horribly because of that. 
And quite clearly, things don't often go perfectly. Leaving things as it is, however, you still have mountains of lore to work with. From broad strokes like how each faction generally acts, to smaller stories like Caiaphas Cain, you could tell all the stories you want without one major one having to go through everything. And the ultimate reason to me is this. The point of a storyline is to have it come to an end at some point, yeah? I mean, when I pick up a book, I don't just get to the last few chapters and toss it out of my car into the freeway. I don't know what happens. But for Warhammer, beyond an individual faction's destruction or denying your own personal canon, do you know what the conclusion of the storyline means? No more war games because the war ended. Surely the natural conclusion of the storyline is that someone has to win, right? We can never truly advance a storyline because if it ends in the way that a storyline naturally does, then the game ends. And while we can always just play in the setting before it ended, it would kind of sting knowing that whereas once your games are part of a larger, undecided universe, there's now an endpoint and ultimately what you're doing won't change that outcome. May as well pretend your troops are sitting around the battlefield and eating glue by that point. But that being said, storyline advancement isn't totally bad, is it? Of course not. Let's look at some positives. For one, official policy is that the fluff and setting is entirely up to you to accept, change, or outright ignore. Official statements say that while there are some specifics that are objectively true, such as the Emperor being stuck in his chair, most of what's there is totally up for grabs. By extension, any storyline advancements made are as canon as you want them to be. If you want in your own games, you can ignore BL Tan being fractured and say they came out of the mess just fine. It's as canon as it isn't. As long as everyone you're with agrees on what's happening, then go wild. Hold your Age of Sigmar games in the old world where chaos was held back, or have an Eldar Crusade to permanently wound Slanesh. You have Games Workshop's blessing. Admittedly, kind of a weak point to just say ignore the fluff, but since it has that official backing, it means more than it otherwise would. If nothing else, Warhammer isn't the Star Wars extended universe, so we have that, I guess? If you want a bit more tangible of a benefit, while things moving forward can theoretically spell doom for an entire faction, it can also bring characters into the limelight in ways never before possible. You know what Gilliman was doing before he was revived? Sitting in a glass case like Vladimir Lenin. That's cool for a setting and background detail, but it means that his character couldn't go anywhere. With the storyline being advanced, now we have the Son of God returning to try and sort things out, which never would have happened if things just stayed stagnant. We know about the projects of Belisarius' call, or Gazgul's efforts to unite the Orcs. We know what Marnius Calgar is doing. Hell, he's taking a whole new step in his career as a space marine by becoming a Primaris. The advancing storyline gives these characters some more, well, character. Relatedly, advancing the storyline can give official payoff instead of having to resolve plot lines with homebrew campaigns only. Take the Eldar again. As much as I was just complaining for BL Tan's sake, I like the direction it is going. There's finally some hope for these poor bastards that isn't just mass suicide, and it isn't even the usual new character thing where they're Mary Sue incarnate for a few weeks before the newest Space Marine character sneezes them in the Shadow Realm or something. Though I digress a bit. The point is that the payoff to years of speculation and planning is being delivered, and we have a whole new set of toys to play with for our own games as well. Now we know what happens when Cadia finally falls, because fall it did. We know what the Lamenter situation is finally like as their penitence crusade comes to an end. We get to see how the Blood Ravens are doing, or in what ways the Necrons are coming back, and how the galaxy is responding. While the payoff may not always be good, it's official payoff we otherwise never would have gotten if we just kept the storyline in place. The final reason, and your mileage will definitely vary on this one, is that it's a game. If Games Workshop one day finally finished the Warhammer settings for good as far as lore goes, how would that affect the game itself? It really wouldn't. I mean, I guess we'd be done getting stuff like new factions ever again, but aside from that, the tabletop game itself wouldn't go anywhere. I can still play old rules. I mean, hell, that's what old fantasy players have still been doing for, what, six years now? This may seem like a stupid point, and that's a fair stand to take, but at the same time, we enjoy games and movies that have inevitable conclusions all the time. Why shouldn't that apply here? I know that World War II ends with the demonetization mustache man French kissing a luger, but I've still enjoyed games like World of War, or Axis, and Allies. I know that Anakin is going to be Darth Vader and kill a bunch of kids, but I still love the Clone Wars. We can still keep playing the game of Warhammer if the storyline keeps going or ends, because ultimately, it's a game. The fluff doesn't affect the rules. If nothing else, the golden argument of shut the fuck up and play the game is always there to fall back on. As for my opinion, I like storyline advancement. It's a great tool to make the setting feel more alive, even if sometimes it retcons old lore to do so. But when it's being advanced by a bunch of barely sentient gorilla people, then yeah, it isn't so good. It all depends on who's making the storyline progress and how. When they do good, it's overall a good thing. When they do bad, it's bad. I hope you enjoy me ending on such a lukewarm point. Thanks for watching. Take care out there. Okay, so this is completely unrelated, but you know what I really want to see? A bunch of Eldar Aspect Warriors doing the Ginyu Force pose. I put too much thought into this and I even mapped out who should be where. Let me lay it out for you. A Howling Banshee should be Rakum. 
a swooping hawk should be birder, a fire dragon should be jace, jace, whatever, Guldo should be either a warlock or a striking scorpion, and Ginyu should be a dire avenger. Tell me this wouldn't be the stupidest great thing you've seen.